Hello everybody, so this is the um, a little bit of a demo of the bouncing ball and um, if you hear any children or family members in the background that's just uh, the ambiance of my workspace so uh, no apologies, just, it's just part of the joy of working at home, right? So uh, let's see, so the first thing we want to do is open up uh, you might want to open up a scene, say you've saved your scene from home and you want to open up your bouncing ball. So there's my file, and so when I open it, um, what's going to happen is it's going to say, hey, where's this reference file for the ball rig? And this was the, the ball rig we I handed out to you, maybe you had it in class. Essentially what's happening is it's looking at this file path that was saved, and it's not finding it. So I'm going to browse to re... Uh, to point it to a new location. So I will go back to here and there's this and I've saved that ball rig under my a new directory. So you just point it into that new direction, say open and it should load fine. So now I have that uh, file that we were doing in class. All right. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and say new scene, file, import, I'm sorry, not import. File create reference, and for creating a reference, uh, I want to create uh, do the bouncing ball. So I have my rigs folder, and inside my rigs, I have my ball rig, and I will reference it. Um, the default settings here for referencing are going to be fine. Uh, yes, I want to use a namespace. It will use the root. Um, namespace is essentially when you bring in a reference, it puts the name of the file and then the colon and then then it starts that's the actual file inside of there so you'll notice everything has ball rig in front of it that's what we call the namespace uh, so here we go we have our ball there's no texture on it by default so if you want to assign a texture you select the geometry we go into our um, hyper shape which is this ball right here little icon I'll drag that over uh, let's go ahead and uh, select a new one. Let's make a blend. Blends have the little shiny on them. So from here we can go to the color property of the blend. Click on that. We will bring in the uh, this checker and then we'll change the colors of the checker to be something different and then we can drag that blend right onto here. Um, you can also, if I had it selected, I could right click on the blend and I could say assign material to viewport selection. Alright, so there we go. Here is, oops, cancel. I have brought my hyper shade into there. That's what I want. Okay, so now I have a ball. And if you want to go back and access the shader to make changes, you can do it from your attribute editor. So I kind of want to bring the specular highlight a little tighter. That's not quite so strong. All right, so when we're bouncing a ball, in this particular rig, we have uh, se several controls to work with. This is the placer node, and we're going to use this one to do our translation, our big major translations. This one here is um, another translation control. This one we're just going to do up and down on. Uh, this next one is a rotation, ROT. It can actually be used for anything. Um, it's kind of a bonus control. Uh, inside of this we have the squash and stretch. So we have a squash and stretch. And we also have an angle. So we can either angle that way. So it's like zooming towards the ground or it's zooming up into space uh, but if you're animating left to right or I mean sorry across the different axis so that's across the X axis if I come this way um, now we're gonna get the Z axis I might have those backwards this Z might should say X and the X should say Z doesn't matter just do it based on whatever direction looks right for the direction you're animating your ball uh, inside of that, we have one more control, which is the roll. 
Essentially, we're just going to use one of your roll axes here. So the X, the Z, um, or if the ball was kind of rolling around in a sort of a circular path, you were going to have to animate all axes to get that to work right. So there we go. We have all of those controls for the ball. Now I'm going to set up, I'm going to sit, um, So if you hit spacebar, click on Maya, uh, it should give you all your camera views. So it's a quick way to just go, I want the right view. All right, let me open up these controls here. Let's go to my placer. And I'm going to make this about 196 frames, I think is what we were doing in class. And I'm going to start the ball here. Shift W, we'll hit a key for my translations. And then I'll just zero it out there with auto key turned on. We've now set a key, right? Uh, let's go to my, uh, this is my uh, graph editor, which I've hit, I've set it as a hotkey, custom hotkey for uh, F5. And I'm looking for my keyframes. Where are they? I think it's on my translate Z. And I have uh, stepped keyframes by default, so usually by default, and I'll go change mine back to what you guys will have under my animation settings. I can access those by hitting the cog, chasing the little guy. Um, under your settings for animation, you can say what kind of tangents do you want by default. Um, you can see tangent in, which is going into the keyframe, I want auto. And I had stepped, so I'm going to select that and put that back at auto. We'll deal with more stepped animation later. So now with these at stepped, or at auto, I'm sorry, this is what an auto keyframe looks like uh, right there. So it's just gonna automatically decide the best thing for you would probably be flattened curves. Let's see if that's the best thing for me. Well, that starts it slow and then it comes and it eases into that final pose. So I don't think I really want that. I want it to start fast or at a kind of more constant pace. And then it's going to come in here and finish. Let's make sure our playback settings are good. So right now we have 24 frames per second. That's exactly what we want for a scene that is playing at a time of 24 frames per second. There's our animation settings. Here's our time cider playback. And it's gonna try its best to play it at 24 frames a second. Sometimes when a scene gets heavy, it might slow down a little bit. You might not get the full 24 frames. Um, but yeah, if you had every frame and then I press play, see save. The, and you have free playback like that, it's just going to play it as fast as your computer will pretty much allow you to play it, whatever the memory and the CPU will allow. So you want to be careful there, make sure you keep those. Let's just play at 24 frames per second. And that'll be good. Alright, so now let's go ahead and get the uh, Y part of our ball. So here we're going to start the ball up there. Hit. Uh, shift W for keying just the translations and let's just say it takes 16 frames to go down and we'll hit zero for our Y and automatically you see the keys being auto tangent I know at the beginning I want this to be headed down at a more constant speed at a terminal velocity all the way into it as well right so if anything it's it's getting faster I guess a little bit as it goes down and let's see how that looks pretty good I think we can make it faster so shift grab 16 and we'll just do this that feels like a pretty good speed so from here we're gonna bounce up bring it up not quite as high as before this is gonna be nice and flat and then I'll come down again and hit zero and this one we do want to make sure we come at, at an angle so both of these in order to break the tangent so that we can uh, manipulate them properly, we have to select it and with good tangents, break tangent. Okay, so now I can select these tangents individually and kind of move them uh, like that. And that allows the ball to sort of speed in and speed out. Or it kind of comes in fast and it leaves fast. It doesn't, doesn't hang or stick on that bottom frame. Uh, Let's go ahead and block in the rest of our bouncing here. 
a little bit lower, come down, zero, another little bounce, zero, one more maybe, what do you think? Let's bring it up, not so much, and then down again. We get one little, one more. I think a little extra bounce here could be fun. Let's see if we get that. So let's go ahead and select all of our bottom keys, right? Set them to linear, and then we'll go to tangent, break tangents, and that way we can mess around with the actual curvature coming out of each bounce. Now, notice as the the as it decreases in its height. The amount of time it takes to go up and down should be less. So I'm going to start to shift these over. So I'm going to grab all my keyframes uh, from here over and let's just start to shift them. So I'm grabbing shift and selecting over my timeline. Um, I can also come up here into the viewport of my graph editor and just move these keys around. Um, I always hold shift when I move these because otherwise if I don't, they can move on the timing. Shift will lock it to like vertical movements or horizontal. So I'm just going to make these move them closer together where I kind of feel like the timing is going to be appropriate for the amount of uh, distance traveling. There we need a little more. Fix those tangents. Zoom in. You can hit F and it will zoom in on the keyframe that you're currently have selected. Move that over here. That's a better looking curve. This guy can maybe move there. That goes up. The steeper in and out of these, it, the, it will kind of give the effect that the ball is hanging up on that high so you can see by pushing that curve over, it's going to be spending more time up across the high point, uh, which can lead to some fun sort of expression, even if it's not totally accurate to real world physics. Uh, okay, so let's give that a look and see what we've got. So you can see on some of those frames, it's really hanging up, but the last, the first one is not hanging up maybe long enough if I'm going to stick with that idea. So let's go and bring those tangents out and see if we get a little more. Boing, boing, boing. See, you definitely feel the difference between those. Let's bring that maybe there. Let's put that again. Boing, boing, boing. There's one right on here. It feels like it sticks a little too long in the air. This one. Maybe it just goes too high or something. Maybe the timing's too far out. Maybe we need to bring it in by a frame. Little adjustments, one frame adjustments can have a lot of impact. That feels good. Like these need to come out, maybe I even need an extra frame on that first bounce. Yeah. Maybe. As you can see, it gets really a little difficult sometimes to control these, um, and you might do a, a something where you try to actually uh, break these tangents. Uh, can also go to uh, I can break the tangent right but that's actually not what I want as much as I want to um, the I can do weighted and non weighted right now they're all non weighted if I weight them that allows me to pull these handles out and it really changes the curve so here I can go to do a, a weighted tangent and that also should allow me tangents break them Tangents, curves, weighted tangents. There we go. So now I can bring this. And that really helps you shape this curve. Um, a good looking curve usually leads to good looking animation. So now we can see if that. 
There we go. So the next thing you want to do after you've gotten your vertical and horizontal movement in those, once again remember, the translation is on one control, the vertical up and down is on another, and we can just move down to, we're going to skip the rotation one, um, let's go into the squash and stretch control. So from here we can kind of say, let's go ahead and set a keyframe, so S, we'll set our keyframe, I'm going to drag out this, this stretch. I'm going to put an angle on it, so let's see which angle is going to work. So I need the X angle on this one. So I'll do that until I get the ink direction it's headed. That's not steep enough. It's more like that. So one frame before, we're going to hit S for key. In the next frame, we're going to go ahead and squash it. And zero out the angle. Probably even drop it down just a little bit, just so we get to touch the ground. And now the next frame, as it comes out, we're going to squash it the other way, or stretch it rather. So there it goes, stretch. And we're going to put the angle exiting direction. Which is quite vertical. And pretty quickly, I'm going to take out my, my squash. So there we go. It goes back to a... Right, so let's see how that feels. Maybe a little too quick there on the... So shift grab, drag that out. Let's let it... Sometimes you can cheat. It's a good idea to take this um, one frame before and actually have it touch the ground. So you get one frame with it touching, the next frame it they're, they're still touching, and then it launches out. Um, the reason for doing that is it gives your eye enough frames to see um, to see the ball actually touching the ground. And if you don't do it, it might it might kind of bounce off the ground. And you may not actually uh, get the feeling that the ball hit the ground. See there, I think you kind of feel like it actually hits before it didn't quite feel that way. So you go ahead and continue that same idea across for the rest. You continue to do your squash and stretch. Um, so as we come out, so we're from there, we're going to hit the start a key here for the squash stretch. Actually, for all of them, just hit S. Then right before it hits here, that's its maximum uh, stretch. So we'll stretch it out again, make sure our angle is the right way. I mean, in fact, I go back here, I should probably put that angle back at zero. So it's always careful, we gotta be careful the, the frame leading into the next one. So you wanna start from zero on all attributes and as we get into it, we're speeding. There's our squash. So not as much of a squash this time. Change the, um, we could go once again for a little bit of touch, touch and go. And as we come out of it, we are going to stretch with a little bit of angle. And then real quickly, we're going to get back into zero land. So zero both those out. I feel like that initial angle on this is just too, needs to be steeper. There we go. Let's move both those down. That's for the X angle, and coming out of it probably shouldn't be quite. Boing, boing. You need to really pay attention to these because it's when I set those extra keyframes, I think it um, was hurting my up and downs. That feels better.
Okay. So let's just assume we continued there and we did all of our squash and stretch. The last thing we want to add is our rolling. So I have the rolling control here and now I'm going to find out which axis I want to roll on, which is going to be the rotate Y. So start there, go to my last frame, which should be on there. Hit shift E again, that puts keys on my rolling. And now I will just roll I'm just going to make an estimate about how many times I need to roll it. Let's take a look at our roll X. So it should be starting at a pretty constant roll, and then it's going to slow uh, out into there. And now we just go ahead and see. So the real telltale is right here at the end. You can ask, is the ball sliding? And it definitely is. So we're going to add some more rotations. And let's see how that works. Still sliding. That feels pretty good. Now I feel like the ball is actually, so having this side view really helps because you can see your grid and you can see how is the texture lining aligning with the grid. All right, so let's take a look at that from full. Good, so now I'm gonna hold Close my curves. Let's come back into perspective view. And uh, in order to get full screen, I might have to just drag this off and then hide it. Okay. There we go. So Go ahead and play around and get this um, bouncing ball looking as good as you can. Um, from class, we should have most of it done. And now the next thing would be, well, what's what's the homework? How is the homework different from this? So we had a couple of uh, possibilities. Let me show you what those are in terms of what we can do with the homework assignment. So one idea might be to bring in the diving board. Um, and here we have the vent control for it. And you can have that ball roll out and do a little jump off the diving board. Um, so that's one idea you can do. So here's another option for the homework assignment. In, um, one if you just do dive, jumping off the diving board. This would be uh, one where you would kind of model, and this could be very crude, just using a bunch of cubes and scaling them around. And you make some sort of little obstacle course for the ball to roll, it can drop back and forth, and then it would like hit something and launch out. That could be a fun way to do it. Um, and as you're going through, just keep in mind things, hey, it's rolling, but when it hits, it could have a little bit of squash, and then as it comes out, maybe it stretches, and it arcs, there's a little bit of an arc to that. It squashes right here, does a little bounce, um, and then it rolls off. And then here you're going to get a, it probably wouldn't be quite as big of a squash, but then when it launched, because this would be propelling it so quickly up, the ball would really stretch as it uh, would get launched into outer space. So for the homework assignment, keep it to 400 frames max. That's a lot of animation to do. I know we had, in class, I think I said 100. Something like this was not going to be easy to do in 100 frames. So if this is what you're selecting, if I force you to 100, you're going to get probably to like 1, 2, and then you'd be done. Um, the thing I really want to do is just focus on quality of animation and not so much on quantity. Um, if the quality is not good, then I'm just going to be... We're going to be working on them longer in class and over homework assignments because I want the quality uh, to be high and kind of check off that skill or that um, um, both from a technical but also from uh, our animation principles and make sure we have that checkbox fully uh, and completely secured uh, before we move forward. So. Yeah, you can either do that or you do your, uh, you can bring in the diving board and the ball can roll up to the edge 
you can like get a little, you know, does he look over the edge somehow? I don't know if you, you can't really deform him too much to do that sort of thing. But he might go back, he might roll back a little bit, and then he can jump up, jump down, jump up, and then he can either go, you can either have him go like this and fall down, maybe he just jumps out of the screen, um, maybe you have, maybe the diving board just flat breaks, it bends, bends like this, and then <laughs> he can just like slip off the edge or something, or maybe the whole diving board just, you animate the whole thing and it just starts to tumble, and it can bend back and forth, and ah, off this pitch. So you can be a little bit creative with this, uh, but the physics di and the dynamics of the ball bouncing, the squash to stretch, and sort of the attitude of it is really what we're after. So have fun, and uh, we'll see you guys in class.